Hey, what's up guys? It's Tech Infusion, and today I'm going to show you how to create this really cool neon, fire, or electric intro in After Effects. Let's jump right in. All right, so first off, let's create a new composition. I'm just gonna call mine Neon Intro, and I'll leave mine 1920 by 1080 and 30 frames per second, but you can really choose whatever works for you here. Then just press OK. Next, we need to import our logo file by dragging and dropping it into our project panel. Then let's drag our logo down into the timeline. Next, we need to convert our logo into masks by auto tracing. With our logo selected, go up to layer and select auto trace. I like to use the default settings. However, I do change and check this little box that says apply to new layer. Then just press okay. All right, now we can delete our logo file since we have a new layer with just our logo masks. Now go to the effects and presets window and search for Saber. If you don't already have Saber installed, I'll have a link to the free plugin download in the description below. I'm gonna drag this effect onto our logo file. In the effects control window, we can start to configure the plugin. I like to set the preset to neon. However, this is where you could switch it to fire, electricity, or any other preset here. Now let's change the color to our desired logo color and then drop down this customized core option. Where it says core type, let's change this to layer masks. And here you'll see that this neon effect now follows our logo. From here, I'll just adjust some settings to make the glow look how I want it to. That's looking pretty good to me. Now let's have this logo animate in. Let's set the start offset at 100%, and with our playhead at the beginning of our timeline, I'm gonna select the stopwatch next to start offset. Then I'll jump about two seconds forward on my timeline and set the start offset to 0%. Now with the logo layer selected, I'll press the U key on my keyboard, which will show me the keyframes for what I just animated. I'll then select both keyframes and press F9 on my keyboard to easy ease these keyframes. From here, I'll just jump into the graph editor and adjust the curve to look like this. Now let's add some flicker to our logo. Let's click the drop down here for flicker, and with our playhead at the beginning, press the stopwatch next to flicker intensity. Then I'll set the value to 400%, and jump forward two seconds on my timeline and set the flicker intensity to 0%. Lastly, I'll drop down the render settings option and set the composite settings to transparent. This will ensure that any graphics we put behind our logo will show up. Okay, let's right click on our logo layer here and click pre-compose. I'll name this layer logo. Then make sure this box is selected to move all attributes and press OK. Then I'm just gonna press S on my keyboard and scale this logo and then P on my keyboard and position it to where I want. Okay, next let's work on the background. First, let's create a new solid by going to layer, new, and solid. And I'll call this background. In my effects and presets window, I'll search for the gradient ramp effect and drag it onto my new solid. Then in the effects controls window, I'll adjust the two colors for my desired look. Next, let's create another solid and name it Smoke. Then search for Fractal Noise in the Effects and Presets window and drag it onto the Smoke solid. I'll set the Fractal type to Dynamic Progressive and adjust the contrast and brightness here a little bit until it looks kind of what I'm looking for. Then under Transform, I'll increase the scale by quite a bit to around 1000 here. All right, next, under Sub Settings, I'm going to set Sub Rotation to negative 250. And with our playhead at the start of our timeline, I'll press the stopwatch next to evolution and then go all the way to the end of my timeline and increase this value until the speed of the smoke is going as fast as I want it to. Now at the bottom of our timeline panel, I'll press this button that says toggle switches and modes and then set the blending mode of the smoke to overlay. So now it should look something like this, which already looks really cool. Next, let's create a new solid and call it particles and apply the CC particle world effect onto it. Under effect controls, I'm gonna set the birth rate to 15. Under producer, I'll set the X position to negative 0.13, the Y position to 0.16, the X radius to 1.235, the Y radius to 0.6, and the Z radius to one. Next, under physics, I'll set the animation to viscous and set the gravity to zero and the resistance to 50. Then under particle type, we'll change it to lens convex and adjust the birth and death size until the particles are the size I'm looking for here. Next, with my playhead all the way at the beginning of my timeline again, I'll go under extras and effect camera and click on the stopwatch next to rotation Y. Then I'll go to the end of my timeline and increase the rotation to about 30. Next, let's add a fill effect to our particles and in the effect controls panel, change the fill color to white. 
The last thing to do for our particles is to apply a glow effect. So I'll find that in my effects and presets window and drag it on here. Now I'm gonna duplicate my particles layer with control or command C and V, then name it particles floor. Now I can just adjust a few settings here. Under producer, we can set the position X to zero and the radius Y to 0 0.025. Now let's duplicate this layer one more time and search for a radial fast blur in the effects and presets window and add it onto our new duplicated layer. Now I'll just adjust the amount of blur and set the zoom to brightest. And then I can adjust the center settings to make sure it's giving me the effect I want here. I'll also change the opacity here as well to help it blend in more. And I can just do that by pressing T on my keyboard and then changing the value down here. Perfect, that looks really good. Now let's select all of our layers here and right click and select pre-compose. I'll name this logo in effects. Now let's apply a mirror effect on this composition. I can find that in my effects and presets window and I'll just apply that on here. In the effects control window, I'll set the reflection angle to 90 and then adjust the reflection center to line up kind of where I want it here. I can always make tweaks later if it needs to be changed, but that looks good right around here. Now let's create our floor layer. It helps to have some sort of texture downloaded. I have a texture of the moon because I'm kind of going for this neon space theme. Once we drag it in, I'll enable 3D for this layer by pressing this toggle switches and modes button again and clicking this 3D box icon. Then I'll just grab this X rotation adjustment right here until it lays flat like a floor under my logo. I'll also adjust the scale and position to get it aligned properly. I'll then search and add a black and white filter as well as a brightness and contrast effect to dial in the floor look. Next, I'm gonna add the linear wipe effect, which is also under the effects and presets window and adjust the settings here to about 20% transition completion. And then I'll set the wipe angle to 180. Then I'll set the feather to about 900 here. And what we're really going for here is to just make this look like an actual floor and make sure it fades kind of into the horizon. Okay, with it looking pretty close, I'll just pre-compose this layer, name it floor and press okay. Then I'll just move the floor below my logo and effects compositions in my layers here. And now let's go to layer, new and add adjustment layer. Now under the effects and presets window, search for a compound blur and add it onto the new adjustment layer. In the controls window, let's select this drop down box here and select our floor layer. Then we can mess with the maximum blur until it looks realistic. This is looking awesome. Now for a couple of finishing touches, I'm gonna go back into my logo and effects composition here and I'll select my pen tool with either G on my keyboard or just up in this toolbar up here. If I don't have any layers selected, I can actually see this fill and stroke option up here and I'll just begin to adjust that. I don't want any fill and I want my stroke to be white with about a two pixel thickness. Then I'll just draw this curved line here and you can really make this look however you want. It's kind of just completely up to you at this point. I'll then go up to layer and select auto trace and click OK. Next, I'll go into my logo composition here and copy the saber effect that is applied and I'll paste it back onto this auto trace layer it just made. In effect controls, I'll lower the core size of the saber and make some color adjustments. And then I'll just duplicate this layer here and move this line to a different part of the frame, kind of just to create some balance within the, the frame here. And then I'll just adjust the timing of the layer so that it's offset from the others. Now let's go back to our main neon intro composition and preview it. It looks super good. You can add any other extra effects you want here, obviously, but I'm super happy with this. As I mentioned before, you can adjust the neon saber effect to be fire, electricity, or any other effect and achieve a totally different result. Anyways, guys, that's all for this video. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like and don't forget to comment, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss more videos like this. I hope you have a great rest of your day and until next time, guys, peace out.